Motion control is a challenging problem. Nearly all previous solutions make use of high-level features, such as the center of mass, some high-level structure, such as a finite state machine, or assumed knowledge of the dynamics. By using deep neural networks and reinforcement learning in our approach, we avoid the need for such prior knowledge. We are also motivated by learning high-level skills that require locomotion, such as path following and soccer dribbling. These tasks require planning and interaction with the environment. With hierarchical reinforcement learning, we train controllers that operate at multiple time scales. The high-level controller provides intermediate goals that direct the low-level controller towards completing the overall task. The low-level controller inputs consist of footstep-based goals and the state of the character. It receives rewards for following a desired style and meeting the footstep-based goals, and outputs desired join angles. The low-level controller is represented by a fully connected network and trained using an actor-critic framework. The high-level controller inputs consist of a task-specific goal, the state of the character, and the surrounding terrain. It receives task-dependent rewards and outputs a short-term footstep plan for the low-level controller. The high-level controller is represented by a deep convolutional network and is trained using the same actor-critic framework as the low-level controller. Here we first show low-level controllers that illustrate a variety of styles. The varying styles are each achieved by simple modifications to the reward function. Here we show robustness to external forces. The training results in controllers that are robust to large perturbations which were not encountered during training. The plot at the top right illustrates the character's expected future rewards, which decrease when the character is off balance. The controller is robust to unanticipated 9 degree inclines and 6 degree declines. Different low level controllers can be blended by simply interpolating the output actions from the networks. The resulting actions remain robust. It also supports modest extrapolation. The path-following high-level controller learns how to navigate on narrow pathways with a varying width by providing step targets to the low-level controller. Although the footstep-based goals that the high-level controller provides to the low-level controller are unattainable, the high-level controller learns to specify goals that elicit the desired behavior from the low-level controller. Using the same input features, a new high-level controller is trained to navigate through an environment consisting of tall pillar obstacles. For this task, the height map input feature is exchanged for a velocity map of the obstacles. After training, the high-level controller has learned to navigate to the target while avoiding moving obstacles. In this soccer dribbling task, the high-level controller has learned to perform a sequence of subtasks in the correct order. It learns to first take possession of the ball, then to dribble the ball towards the target. Once the ball has reached the target, it learns to circle the ball while maintaining some distance to avoid perturbing the ball away from the target.
When the ball is replaced with a cube, the controller is still able to solve the task. Thanks to the control hierarchy, we can switch between different low-level controllers without additional training. Here we show different low-level controllers with a high-level controller that was trained with only the nominal walk low-level controller. 